Is the size and scale of Gobekli Tepe unique in yes. comparison to the ones that are around it? Yes. So far, the ones that have been found, Gobekli Tepe is unique. 12,000 years ago, before pyramids rose, before writing even existed, a hill in Turkey hid a secret that would rewrite history. Beneath layers of earth stood massive stone pillars, each carved with animals, symbols, and figures no one could explain. For decades, archaeologists could only guess at their meaning. But when artificial intelligence scanned the site, it revealed something no human eye had ever seen. Patterns too precise, too intentional to be random. The carvings weren't just art, they were a message a record from the dawn of humanity and a cosmic warning meant for the future. What it points to changes everything we thought we knew. On a lonely hill in southeastern Turkey, time itself lay buried. For decades, archaeologists believed civilization began with farming, that once people learned to plant crops, villages and temples followed. But in 1996, a German archaeologist named Klaus Schmidt uncovered something that shattered that story. Beneath the soil of Gobekli Tepe stood massive stone pillars, some towering over 16 feet tall and weighing up to 40 tons. They were arranged in vast circles, carved with animals, strange symbols, and even human-like figures with belts and folded arms. What made the discovery so shocking was its age, over 12,000 years old. This was thousands of years before the pyramids, long before writing, long before towns or farms. By every rule of history, it should not exist. How could nomadic hunter-gatherers, people without pottery, metal or wheels, have raised such monumental structures? The more they dug, the stranger it became. Evidence showed Gobekli Tepe wasn't a village, but a ceremonial site, possibly the world's first temple. Feasting bones of wild animals surrounded the pillars, hinting at massive gatherings. And then came the greatest mystery of all. The site had been deliberately buried around 8000 BC, as if its builders wanted it hidden, preserved for another age to find. Yet for all its grandeur, the carvings spoke in riddles. Foxes, vultures, snakes, headless men, symbols no one could decode. Until AI stepped in. When the first pillars were uncovered, the carvings immediately stood out. They weren't random scratches or decorations. They were alive with meaning. Vultures spread their wings as if carrying souls to the heavens. Foxes darted across the stone, snakes twisted in aggressive postures, and scorpions crawled alongside headless human figures. Some of the pillars even had arms, belts, and hands carved into their sides, giving the impression that the stones themselves were giant human-like beings, guardians of an ancient secret. But what did it all mean? For decades, experts argued. Some said the animals were totems of different clans, Others thought they were symbols of a shamanic ritual where humans took on the spirits of beasts. A few insisted the carvings were nothing more than primitive art, meant to intimidate or inspire awe. Yet the repetition was undeniable. The same creatures appeared again and again across different enclosures, suggesting a shared symbolic language that we no longer understood. The most famous of all was Pillar 43, the so-called vulture stone. A vulture, a scorpion, strange abstract shapes, and a headless man. A scene so haunting that scholars could not agree if it was a ritual of death and rebirth, a map of the sky, or a record of something catastrophic. For years, human imagination hit a wall. But then came a tool that could see patterns no human eye could. Artificial intelligence. For decades, archaeologists circled the same debates, trapped by human bias and the sheer volume of data. Each carving was a puzzle piece, but no one could see the full picture. That changed in the digital age. Researchers began creating a complete 3D scan of Gobekli Tepe.
using LiDAR lasers and photogrammetry to capture every detail of every pillar. What emerged was not just a record, but a perfect digital twin of the site, a database waiting to be decoded. This was where artificial intelligence entered the story. Instead of trying to guess what the carvings meant, scientists trained neural networks to search for hidden patterns. Where a human might see a fox and a snake carved side by side and call it coincidence, the AI compared thousands of carvings across the site in minutes. It began to see relationships invisible to us, where animals repeated, where positions shifted, how symbols connected across enclosures separated by hundreds of feet. The results were staggering. The fox was not just a fox. The scorpion was not just a scorpion. Together, they mapped the sky. The AI found alignments so precise that the animals were not random decorations, but constellations carved in stone. And that realization turned Gobekli Tepe from a temple into something far stranger, a cosmic observatory from the dawn of time. The carvings that once seemed chaotic now formed a grand design. When the AI overlaid star maps onto the symbols, a startling truth emerged. Gobekli Tepe was aligned with the heavens. The fox, appearing over and over, matched the position of Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. The scorpion was placed exactly where the constellation Scorpio lies. Even vultures and other figures lined up with recognizable star clusters. This was no accident. It meant the builders of Gobekli Tepe, who had no written language, no metal tools, and no farming, had somehow mapped the cosmos with extraordinary precision. They weren't just hunter-gatherers carving animals, they were sky watchers, recording the movements of stars and planets on a scale that rivaled later civilizations by thousands of years. But this revelation raised disturbing questions. Why would nomadic people struggling to survive devote such effort to tracking the stars? Was it for ceremony, for calendar keeping, or for something more urgent? The answer came when the AI focused on the most famous carving of all, Pillar 43, the Vulture Stone. What looked like a jumble of animals and abstract shapes matched the positions of constellations on a very specific date, a date not chosen at random, but one burned into the memory of the Earth itself. That date, nearly 12,800 years ago, the moment the world nearly ended. For years, the vulture stone had been an unsolved riddle, a vulture stretching its wings, a scorpion at its feet, a headless man with an erect phallus, and strange handbag symbols above it all. To human eyes, it looked like myth, ritual, or chaos. But when AI ran the comparison, the carving snapped into focus. It was a map of the sky on a single catastrophic day. That date was locked around 10,800 BC, the beginning of the Younger Dryas period, when something struck Earth. Geological evidence shows a comet or fragments of one exploded in the atmosphere, plunging the planet into a sudden deep freeze. Oceans shifted, floods swept continents, and species vanished in waves of extinction. It was a global cataclysm, and Gobekli Tepe's builders had recorded it. The vulture wasn't just carrying flesh, it was carrying a soul into the heavens. The scorpion wasn't just an animal, it marked Scorpio in the sky. The headless man wasn't a myth, it was humanity itself, humbled before disaster. The handbags which appear in cultures around the world seem to represent cycles of knowledge carried forward through destruction. This was not a story for their time alone. It was a warning meant to echo through millennia, a message carved into stone. The world is not safe, and catastrophe always comes again. The AI's analysis of Gobekli Tepe didn't stop with one date. When it cross-referenced the carvings, a pattern began to emerge. The builders weren't just recording a single disaster, they were mapping cycles of destruction. Each animal, each position, each symbol seemed to echo a rhythm of time, a countdown not measured in years, but in cosmic intervals. 
The AI's analysis of Gobekli Tepe didn't stop with one date. When it cross-referenced the carvings, a pattern began to emerge. The builders weren't just recording a single disaster, they were mapping cycles of destruction. The animals, each position, each symbol seemed to echo a rhythm of time, a countdown not measured in years, but in cosmic intervals. The implication was terrifying. These hunter-gatherers understood something we are only beginning to rediscover. The universe itself moves in repeating cycles, and with those cycles come upheavals. Ancient floods, fire from the sky, sudden freezes, events that erase entire chapters of life. It was as if Gobekli Tepe was a calendar, not for harvests or seasons, but for cataclysms, a prophetic ledger carved in stone to say, this has happened before and it will happen again. Even the deliberate burial of the site, sealing the pillars beneath tons of earth, looked less like abandonment and more like preservation, a way to safeguard the warning for those who would live after the next great cleansing. But who could have had such foresight? How could nomads with nothing but stone tools have recorded the cycles of the cosmos with this kind of precision, unless the knowledge came from somewhere else? By every definition, the people of Gobekli Tepe should not have been capable of this. They were hunter-gatherers of the pre-pottery Neolithic, with no farms, no permanent towns, no wheels or metal. Their tools were flint blades and stone hammers, and yet they raised megaliths weighing 40 tons, carved them with precision, and aligned them with the stars. How? One theory points to a lost civilization, fragments of an advanced culture destroyed in the very cataclysm the vulture stone records. Survivors carrying fragments of knowledge may have taught the nomads how to preserve memory in stone. Some call this the Atlantis theory, though evidence remains scarce, perhaps erased by the floods themselves. Another theory is simpler, yet just as powerful, knowledge passed down through generations of sky watchers. For millennia, people living under the open night sky would have seen patterns, counted cycles, and noticed when the heavens changed violently. They didn't need telescopes. They needed memory, ritual, and a way to make their warnings permanent. Whichever theory is true, the intent is undeniable. These builders were not carving decoration, they were recording knowledge for the survival of humanity. And the fact they buried Gobekli Tepe may mean they feared what was coming next. But Gobekli Tepe is not alone. Across the hills of Turkey, other sites are rising from the earth, whispering the same message. For years, Gobekli Tepe seemed like a singular miracle, an isolated wonder buried on one hill. But new excavations have revealed it was not alone. Scattered across southeastern Turkey are dozens of similar sites now called the Stone Hills. Each carries the same T-shaped pillars, the same animal carvings, the same haunting silence of a forgotten age. The most famous of these is Karahan Tepe, lying only a few hours away. At first glance, it mirrors Gobekli Tepe, but inside its chambers are statues carved directly into the bedrock. Human faces with hollow eyes, pillars lined with snakes, and rooms that seem designed for rituals lost to time. Other hills, still unexcavated, appear on ground-penetrating radar, waiting to tell their story. These sites suggest a network, not a lone experiment. The people who built Gobekli Tepe were part of a wider cultural system, sharing symbols and beliefs across a region. Whether they were independent groups united by ritual or one coordinated society is still unknown. But one thing is clear. The knowledge was not confined to one hill. It spread deliberately across a sacred landscape. And if the same warnings were carved in multiple places, then the builders wanted to make sure the message could not be lost. The question is, what exactly were they preparing the future to face?
If Gobekli Tepe and its sister sites were observatories, they weren't built for idle curiosity. They carried a message. The carvings spoke of cycles, of destruction, of renewal. To the builders, time was not a straight line. It was a circle, a wheel of creation and collapse. Each animal, each human figure, each symbol of death and rebirth was part of that great cycle. The deliberate burial of Gobekli Tepe may have been more than preservation. It may have been ritual, a way of sealing knowledge so it could endure until the next age. The symbols, facing inward, suggest the builders weren't speaking only to their own people. They were speaking to the future. And what they preserved is chilling. The AI's analysis showed Gobekli Tepe's carvings don't just describe one cosmic strike, they trace a rhythm of disasters, cataclysms that come in waves, each separated by thousands of years. If this is true, then the builders believed humanity lives under constant threat, not by chance, but by the very cycles of the universe. To them, the sky was not just stars, it was a clock a cosmic countdown that ticked toward cleansing events, and the question lingers like a shadow. If they marked the last disaster, what did they know about the next? Gobekli Tepe is no longer just an archaeological site. It is a voice from the deep past whispering across 12,000 years, a voice that tells us humanity is fragile, that civilizations rise and fall, and that the heavens themselves shape our destiny. The builders knew this. They carved it in stone, buried it, and left it for us to find. Now, with AI decoding their symbols, we stand at a crossroads. Were they survivors of a forgotten civilization, passing forward the memory of destruction? Or were they ordinary people who looked to the stars and saw what we still refuse to admit? that the universe moves in dangerous cycles, and our age is not immune. The pillars of Gobekli Tepe stare at us like silent witnesses, daring us to listen. They record a comet that struck long ago, but their patterns hint at more to come. If the builders saw themselves as guardians of memory, then their warning is not ancient history, it is prophecy. The countdown carved in stone has not yet reached zero. And if the cycle they feared still turns, then the next chapter of this story may not belong to the past at all. It may belong to us.